Hello everybody, this is George from Digital Art School and today we'll see just how much you can do with Photoshop and 3D. Now, this won't be a tutorial, it will be a show of force, uh, plea case for Photoshop and I really want you to go out and experiment and try all the features you see in this video and really uh, experiment for yourself and try to get uh, the hand of, of uh, the workflow that Photoshop offers when it comes to 3D. I'm using CSC Extended and uh, the environment of working with 3D is very much similar with the one you'll find on CC and pretty similar with uh, extended versions of, uh, of previous extended versions of Photoshop. So I'll just keep, I'll turn my interface uh, in, uh, in the 3D one. Basically, it just adds this this tab right here, which can be found on Win Windows 3D. Um, again, you'll see so so many features right here, and we won't be going in depth in any of them. I'll just create a pretty nice graphic and just showcase uh, the work. So, I won't be working with uh, preset objects, which you can find in here. Some of them are pretty interesting, some of them aren't. Um, just know that uh, you can start with uh, something even, uh, even if you don't have uh, no clue uh, how to make a 3D uh, element. Just go to a new layer, 3D, new mesh from layer, mesh preset, build a cube or something. Okay. I just delete these layers. Oh, sorry. So, what I'll start with is a text layer. So, I want to make uh, something of a logo for Scoop. Uh, so, I just write Scoop and maybe I'll skip the O's. And add some uh, spaces. Maybe I'll make them something more interesting. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is, which is something I recommend doing when you're using uh, special layers such as text, is convert them to um, a, sh a shape. So this way, when we transform this in a 3D layer. Photoshop uses a much more precise algorithm. So we'll go to 3D, a new 3D extrusion from selected path. So this is my selected path, and bam, we're here. You'll see the environment changes, and uh, it's only like this as long as I'm on the move tool. So whenever I'm working with other tools, uh, I'm just uh, plain Photoshop. When I'm on the move tool, I have access to a new tab here, a new mini window here, which I can switch with my main view. And again, I can see all these parameters here uh, that influence my geometry, my scene, my environment, my view, uh, and the lighting. So, what I'll do now is um, Let's see if I can make this a little bit more interesting. First of all, I don't like it as extruded. So, a quick tip is when in doubt, don't need to go anywhere else but cl double click these uh, icons right here and you'll get all the settings for them. So, this is my active uh, object. I just rename it text object. So, uh, I have some shape presets. This is an extrusion. I can control all parameters of the extrusion, like uh, the depth of it, uh, twist, uh, taper, anything. Obviously, I don't want to mess with this right now. Uh, I can always choose from a preset. Uh, 
this looks interesting enough yeah it does let me see if I can make it um, inflate inwards might be more interesting so yeah definitely prefer this version so uh, just quickly change my texture I have access to the front part the extrusion the back part uh, the inflation when I when I have this type of object uh, an extruded object so I just select them all and just pick a material from from here just go something really uh, pretty basic uh, let me see this one has refraction I'll just turn this down uh, to the minimum and also bump no I'll just go I'll keep this one but remove the bump texture and just give it an interesting color so that's it okay great now I'll add a nice background to my 3d scene just make a new layer I'll just hide this one uh, the layers act uh, just like regular layers and these are in a way uh, we could call them a type of smart object and they rely heavily on smart object um, all the textures, everything are in fact smart objects that uh, load inside this uh, this uh, object right here, this 3D object. But I'll just make a new layer, hide this one. Uh, I have my foreground color black, so I can go to filter, render, clouds, then go filter, pixelate, and just make some squares. I like I like this size. I'll go OK. I'll just make them all. I just increase the contrast of them a little bit. Have something like this. Okay. And now with these pixels active, I'm I've selected this layer. I can go to 3D, new mesh from layer, and choose depth map. I can map this to a plane, a two-sided plane, a cylinder, or a sphere. I'll just go for plane. So, what this will do is actually extrude this uh, canvas image, uh, this bitmap, according to the value of the colors. So, white will be 100% extrusion, black will be 0% extrusion. So, as a matter of fact, I think I'll make a black border. Of this, so uh, so that I know the far most edges are are straight. So now I go to. I think I should cover these pixels as well. Good. Come here a little bit. Okay, filter, uh, sorry, 3D, new mesh from layer, depth map to plane. So, look at this. So much, uh, so much, uh, such a rich geometry in, in such an easy, an easy way. So, I'll just scale this down. I, I'm using this gizmo. I can always double click here, go to coordinates and scale the corresponding axis. So I notice I have these extrusions on this side, which are probably some leftover pixels. So um, maybe I should um, undo this. And take care of those as well. Check. This is okay. So, then black filter 3D 
new match from layer death map playing. So there you go. Much better. Now Whenever the object isn't selected, you navigate the scene in, uh, in various way. You can move the camera, basically, a uh, virtual camera, the virtual view. When you click on it, you'll start uh, messing with the object. So I just click once and then scale it down like this. Okay, first things first. Uh, I need to remember that I'd like to use both these 3D layers uh, together so right now this one will always be in front of the other one so and this one will always be behind and this is because uh, there are in fact two different 3D scenes so this is how Photoshop handles things this one has uh, an X and Y and Z axis, this has another reference system. So, what I have to do is merge them. I can just select them 3D merge 3D layers. So, obviously, there's a scale difference here. This isn't a problem. I just scale this up. Also, if I want to rotate this to a precise value, in my case, zero. Since I notice it's it's actually pretty randomly rotated, I'm just selecting the object 3D tab, and uh, I'm going to the coordinates and just choose zero zero zero. So this is great. Now, okay, okay, there are a couple of things that bother me right now. And first one is the texture of this. So you probably haven't noticed uh, how this one got textures textured once I made it, but for this one it's pretty obvious. So first of all, these are my meshes. So this layer and this layer. So this is text and this is backdrop. So uh, this one is called depth map, just uh, procedurally. This is what Photoshop calls it, so I'll just call it dots or something. So, uh, under dots, I have this uh, texture file. This isn't in fact a texture, it's a shader, it's a material, so it has mm, many, many textures and many properties. And by default, Photoshop maps a uh, diffuse texture with the texture that was once on the canvas. So I can access it like this. Just click on it and edit texture. It tells me a similar uh, message that uh, Photoshop pops up when you open a smart file. So this is my diffuse texture. I just want um, something. Um, actually, I, I don't want the texture. I just close this. I'll just uh, remove this texture. So now the texture will be uh, just a color. So you see, I can make it any color I want. I don't know what. Let's go something like this. Now I notice you usually notice that um, there is color variation in it. So this is due to the fact that, again, by default, Photoshop maps the same map as an opacity map. So I have to remove this texture as well. And now, now I have something pretty, uh, pretty decent. Um, so let me navigate around and arrange these a little bit. Now another thing that bothers me are these shadows on the ground floor. I want objects to cast shadow one onto another because this is really cool, you see. But I don't want them to cast shadow on a plane that doesn't even exist. So to do this, I go to the environment, uh, environment, and on the ground plane uh, menu here, I'll just Cut the opacity 
to zero. This isn't affecting uh, the other shadows in any way. Uh, if, for instance, I, I didn't want uh, these to cast uh, a shadow, I just select them and uncheck cast, sh uh, cast shadow. So this is the shadow they cast. Let me position myself better. So this is the shadow that they cast, but they also cast uh, cast a shadow onto themselves. So like in this part, I can select them and uncheck catch shadow. In this way, Photoshop is really really flexible and versatile. Uh, so easy to to manage uh, otherwise uh, pretty complicated things now I don't want this to cast shadow uh, or I do I don't know I do um, okay so I'm pretty happy with this setup I'll just show off another feature of um, of Photoshop so you can actually import objects made in absolutely any other software um, so if you have a complex shape or something you want uh, UV mapped properly so you have textures going uh, flawless uh, you can do that in, in an external software and just go new 3d layer from file and navigate to your object and Photoshop accepts uh, that obj files and I recommend using these this is a file uh, this is a, a mesh I did in Max so first things first I'll just merge this one with our main scene now whenever you merge I'll just undo this you have to keep in mind that uh, Photoshop is pretty limited when it comes to um, handling 3D objects. For instance, in this scene, I have two objects. I can't even hide them. I can't uh, delete them. So they're here to stay. They're here forever. So whenever you commit to doing something like this, you should uh, uh, really uh, commit to it. So obviously I can make it invisible um, I can make the objects invisible I can make them transparent I can make them really small and send them away uh, from the scene but they'll still be there and uh, load uh, when you save and increase the file size so I want these this geometry to represent the O's from scoop so uh, maybe animate them so what I'll do is uh, duplicate this layer and say two and now merge all three together so when I'm here I have two of these great so first things first I'll just uh, go to my 3D tab with this one and this one. And I'll go 50%, 50%, 50%. Let's see. No. I just kill them individually. I think it's better this way. Um, yeah, this is a bit tedious, um, and as well as far as a uh, workflow is concerned, it's pretty slow. So you have to bear this in mind whenever you decide to uh, work with Photoshop on a 3D piece. Uh, you're bound to, to spend some time uh, handling things. 
So I think I'll I'll need to make this smaller. Let's see. Yeah, this is just about right. So forty two point six. Let's make forty two point six on all axis. Okay. We can move them on two planes, but it's so counterintuitive. So right now I'm moving on the wrong two planes. Now I'm moving them properly. So it's becoming obvious that um, they won't fit in. So I need to make some room. So unlike this. Uh, this item right here, where uh, that's uh, these are all the properties of the item. When it comes to this one, because it's it's been generated differently on the properties tab, I have uh, the options to edit source. So I click on this, uh, select this, and just drag it to the side a little bit. I'm constraining it on the horizontal using uh, shift so this is a PSB file so it's really really uh, basically a smart object I just save and now it's updated in here so I just move this as so and there you go I can um, okay this looks pretty good. Um, I'll just give this to uh, more interesting texture. So uh, make them more reflective, and I'll just sorry. So again, I'll remove the texture and give them a color maybe the same color as these ones something something like that okay just much more reflexive i just copy this and use it here okay also check this is 50% with say 20. I'll do the same in here. 50%. Okay. Now, to better make this, uh, to light up the scene, something a bit more interesting, uh, I'll. Uh, I'll keep this light. I, I'm liking it because it, it gives me these uh, direct shadows, or maybe like this. But I'll also uh, play a little bit with um, uh, my environment. So you see, I have IBL active, and this is actually a color right now. So I can choose to make it a texture. I can change the color uh, to anything I want. This is uh, the color of, uh, let's say, a sky that illuminates the scene from all directions. So um, I can control its intensity. But I just make it something a little bit more interesting. Just uh, choose a new texture and I just edit it. And here I can use all uh, good old Photoshop tools. This will in fact act as a highly dynamic range image. I don't know exactly how Photoshop manages it, but uh, this is how uh, how it lights. I'll just use this square and uh, I don't know this. Menu, let's see, 
animated as so I just populate with um, some dots and also uh, blur them out so they aren't uh, sharp uh, something something like this should be good and maybe also give it a side um, uh, color of some sort um, let's see maybe yellow maybe reddish like this I just blur it out even more Okay. Okay. So I just save this with all the layers. I I can keep all that. And look now, uh, my scene is much more interestingly lit. Uh, I have some interesting reflections going on. Um, looks much much better. And a cool thing is when I am with the environment selected. So you see. And the move tool, I can move uh, the environment, so I can control, uh, for instance, where is that uh, yellow side that's lighting my scene. I can keep it. Uh, I can work my 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 lighting composition. So I like this uh, burnt out feel like this. And from the side. Something like this. I'm deselecting it. So you see, I have all this really good reflection, and Photoshop is is just marvelous when it comes to real time uh, display. So except these shadows, which are a bit jagged, uh, the reflections are really clean, really nice, and it moves really fast. So right now, I'm pretty happy with my with my design. And I'll just go ahead and try to make a little animation because the advantage of using 3D is the fact that you can uh, work once and preview it from a thousand angles. The advantage of 3D with Photoshop is that you can always uh, use all all the other tools that uh, ship with Photoshop and uh, uh, play with them uh, however you like so I can always do this and work with uh, with the layers uh, however I want so right now Photoshop is doing all the blending mode and the 3d uh, at the same time so this is uh, really really powerful but What's really powerful about uh, CS6 and CC is the ability to use the timeline. So I'll just expand this and choose to create video timeline. And all I have to do now is expand this. Uh, this is my main layer. I'm expanding it. I want to animate these objects. Right now I can't see them. So this is OBJ mesh 0 and OBJ mesh. So I'll just call it left O and maybe right O. So I know they are under these layers. So I expand these as well. So now all I have to do is uh, set a bunch of keys. So I'll just set one key for this one and one key for this one. I see they're, they're uh, rescaled, probably because I rescaled them once I, once I placed them in the scene. Uh, this is more or less uh, a bug. So let's see uh, how I can, uh, yeah, this sorts them out. So I recreated the, the keyframes. Uh, it's 
still a little bit buggy and but it's pretty powerful you can even uh, skip this to to an action if you want uh, so I'll just skip my playhead I'll just zoom out also a little bit I can see a bit more okay so I'll just add another key here for this one and for this one and I'll just uh, rotate them on this uh, so now I'm on, on this frame after a couple of seconds so now if I come here so this is left so you see I have to set an initial animation again pretty counterintuitive you would have expected it to maintain the initial position so I can play this uh, it will run it will tell me that uh, the speed of which uh, at which it's running it's it's not uh, uh, correct but uh, it will stream so again this isn't the most powerful video editor but uh, you can do some pretty pretty nifty stuff with it uh, it's not hard to make a loopable video where for instance uh, these rotate to 360 degrees and start uh, right back up uh, again so uh, it is a bit tedious to work with it uh, but uh, and it, it is a little bit buggy but hopefully it won't be so in the new version so now I, I've streamed this so this is at uh, 30 fps they're running pretty slow but I don't really care I just uh, wanted to, to get this uh, effect so now what I can do is uh, just set up my scene and uh, and uh, render this uh, this video. I don't know why this is uh, is is snapping. Yeah, this is uh, yet another bug, but uh, it, it it isn't. Uh, it's not supposed to work like this usually so let's just say I'm uh, I'm happy with uh, with this layout and um, I can go out and render this now another thing I could do is really take advantage of uh, Photoshop editing capabilities so in layers I'll just transform this one to a smart object so right now see this is an issue I just double click it try to edit it there you go it was because I've moved it uh, prior and it, it just didn't uh, show okay so let's see okay so now this is freezed you see Maybe I should have picked a better angle, something, something like this. Can also exaggerate the camera angle a little bit, get a more deep perspective. Okay, this is this is fine. So I'll just save, can close it, it's updated. So, so now that I trans I've transformed this to a smart object, I can manipulate it however I want. Right? So uh, let's make a, a 3D business card. 
and just use this as a logo on it so I just make a new layer make a selection fill it out say black go 3d uh, new mesh new 3d extrusion from selected layer so right now I have a pretty big extrusion I need something really 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 slim and I just rotate this let me control it better so no sorry 90 degrees I'll also put it down on the floor okay so okay. so there you go this is my my business card so what I can do now is uh, take this front layer and uh, first of all let me copy this and hide it and then go here edit texture so this is my texture I can pass my logo can also uh, change this color so it, it isn't quite pure black Say this will work. Type some um, my name here and it says my function. Maybe I should type my full name, right? This is a professional business card. So I don't know, that's pretty much it now this is updated of course I can change my lighting so that it highlights it a little better okay I like this so I can also add a really uh, interesting effect by adding a bump map to this so just new texture And I'll just edit it. Just put a pattern on it. Say this should do. Save, close. Now I have this bump map because my bump map is rectangular and this is. Uh, this isn't uh, this isn't uh, square and my bump map is square I have this uh, this issue so maybe I should go here image image size and make it should have unchecked that one Okay. So like this and make the pattern even smaller let's say 5 ok ok so the bump apparently is pretty strong you can notice if you zoom in like this is a nice angle so we'll just go here here and so we can make this shine make it reflective and also rough so it will uh, disperse the lighting you can preview it here and also make this bump really really small so just 1% maybe make it even even smaller than this in terms of scale 
so let's make it two percent three. Okay. Now it's now it's much better. And this is my 3D card with my 3D uh, not rendered image in it. So a little bit of inception here. And I guess this is a wrap. Now it's been a pleasure and I can only hope you try to experiment with all the features and all the tools there are countless of them and uh, just go out and see which one does what and we'll we'll return with some more in-depth tutorial regarding specific areas of uh, the 3d capabilities of photoshop